before the Big Bang. Well, you see, there was no before, because before the Big Bang, time did not exist. Time is a result of the expansion of the universe itself. But what'll happen when the universe has finished expanding and the movement is reversed? What'll be the nature of time? If string theory is correct, the universe possesses nine spatial dimensions and one temporal dimension. Now, we can imagine that in the beginning, all the dimensions were twisted together. And during the Big Bang, three spatial dimensions, the ones that we know as height, width, and depth, and one temporal dimension, what we know as time, were deployed. The other six remained minuscule, wound up together. Now, if we live in a universe of wound dimensions, how do we distinguish between illusion and reality? Time as we know it is a dimension we experience only in one direction. But what if one of the additional dimensions wasn't spatial, but temporal? If you mix the mashed potatoes and the sauce, you can't separate them later. It's forever. The smoke comes out of Daddy's cigarette, but it never goes back in. cannot go back. That's why it's hard to choose. You have to make the right choice. As long as you don't choose, everything remains possible. What happens when we fall in love? As a result of certain stimuli, the hypothalamus releases a powerful discharge of endorphins. But why exactly that woman or that man? Is there a release of odorless pheromones that correspond to a complementary genetic signal? Or is it physical features that we recognize? A mother's eyes? A smell that stimulates a happy memory? Is love part of a plan? A vast war plan between two modes of reproduction. Bacteria and viruses are asexual organisms. With each cell division, each multiplication, they mutate and perfect themselves much more quickly than we do. Against this, we respond with the most fearsome weapon, sex. Two individuals, by mixing their genes, shuffle the cards and create an individual who resists viruses better the more dissimilar he or she is. Now, are we unknowing participants in a war between two modes of reproduction? To what extent are our fears innate? When we hatch goose eggs in an incubator, and then above the baby birds pass a form simulating a goose in flight, the birds stretch their necks and call out. But if we invert the direction of the silhouette, it conjures the shape of a falcon. The response of the baby birds is immediate. They will crouch in fear, though they've never before seen a falcon. Without any instruction, an innate fear helps them to survive. But in humans, to what ancient dangers might our innate fears correspond? Cigarette smoke, never go back into the cigarette. Why do molecules spread away from each other? Why does a spilled drop of ink never reform? Because the universe moves towards a state of dissipation. That is the principle of entropy, the tendency of the universe to evolve toward a state of increasing disorder. The principle of entropy is related to the arrow of time, a result of the expansion of the universe. But what will happen when gravitational forces counterbalance the forces of expansion? Or if the energy of the quantum void proves too weak? At that moment, the universe might enter its phase of contraction, the big crunch. So what will become of time? Will it reverse?
नमो नमस्ते